Hi beautiful souls, I'm super excited to be hopping on and doing this video series for you guys. So I know I post a lot, I post every day pretty much, um, but I don't do a lot of video and so I thought it would be um, an awesome way to just connect more with you guys and um, interact more. So today I just wanted to start with like sharing a little bit about myself and then going into the first step of what has really helped me transform my relationship with food and to stop using it as a coping mechanism. So, you know, I talk a lot about how food is just a distraction to what's really going on underneath. And that has been like so eye-opening for me. Like so for so many years, I struggled with like just constantly staying, you know, focused on my struggle with food, constantly trying to control more, to manipulate more, right? I struggled for a, a, de a good decade with that diet binge, restrict binge cycle, constantly feeling like I needed to have more willpower, that I needed to just try harder. Because initially in the beginning, right, like for myself, I had anorexia for a year, um, so I saw the the way that when I controlled my food, when I manipulated it, when I controlled exercise, yes, my body changed, right? And so a lot of us develop this evidence that, hey, this worked once, or we think it's evidence, it worked once, so I just need to try harder or I just need to find the right plan. But what I'm sure if you've been doing that for a long time you know is that it does not change how you feel internally right nothing shifts you might have a little bit boost in self-esteem initially if your weight is so attached to your worth which mine was for a long time and in this society I mean why wouldn't it be right we learn coming out of the uterus that fat is bad and skinny is good um, and that we are loved and accepted and validated and approved and acknowledged and all those things when we fit the societal ideal um, but that's still long term does not create happiness that doesn't that doesn't create the feelings that we're seeking when we're trying to manipulate and control our body, right? So I went down the road of after that cycle or near the end of that cycle of like, you know, restricting and using exercise to purge those binges and just like constantly trying to control myself. I turned to health and I became a holistic nutritionist because I thought, okay, if I get healthy, then I'll lose the weight. It was still the intention. The intention was still coming from that place, right? And I learned a lot about health and it was amazing, but I didn't lose weight and I continued to struggle with binge eating. Um, I even took training in functional medicine and hormones and stuff like that. I could run saliva and urine hormone lab tests and I thought okay if I really get into this and like balance my hormones and fix my adrenal fatigue and and support the underactive thyroid then I'll lose the weight still the same intention right um, and from there that's when I realized I needed to go deeper um, and that's why I shifted my business too because I knew and for a long time I was actually really spiritually bypassing and I I wasn't even aware of all the work that I was missing for myself um, while I was trying to help other women. And it wasn't until I found the Hungry for Happiness coaching certification that that changed like so much for me. I had gotten so far with my relationship with food. I had a much healthier mindset um, when it came to that stuff, but there was still, I was still using food as a coping mechanism. I was spiritually bypassing with that. So I'm so excited to share these concepts with you in what has truly transformed my life. And it's just, um, ah, it makes me so excited and like lights me up. And I just, I love this stuff so much. And I, I am now able to actually help transform my clients' lives. And it's just the most gratifying feeling. Like I'm so grateful that I get to do this work having gone through that pain and that darkness and understanding. And that's why I talk so much about, it's not about the food. <laughs> we need to go deeper, right? We're so focused on trying to change a behavior. And that's what the diet industry is all about, right? They're, they're focused on just changing the behavior. And that's why it constantly fails is because we're not getting 
deep enough to what's actually leading to that behavior. So what I wanted to share with you over the next four weeks are four, there, there's so many layers, there's so many things that have helped, but I wanted to share at least four um, steps that have really helped me with changing that relationship with food and my body really and to stop binge eating and that first step is presence mindfulness and this might seem like such a basic thing it's something that's like so trendy to talk about we hear about it all the time um, but when I first heard about it I didn't really fully understand the concept and I'm gonna get into it a bit deeper in this video for you guys so when I first heard about like presence and mindfulness, I thought, okay, I just, I need to be aware of like what I'm seeing, what I'm smelling, what I'm hearing, right? And that's all great and dandy, dandy, who says dandy? <laughs> um, that's all great, but it's like, that's the ex external. We actually want to become aware of what's going on internally because that's what's driving the behavior to turn to food. And I was so like unaware of that for so long. I was so disconnected. And that's what how food was serving me, right? It was like keeping me safe from my internal experience because I didn't know how to be with it and to move through it. So when we talk about like building presence and connecting to what's actually going on, the first step, so there's three pillars of connection I want to share with you guys. There's the intellectual pillar, the physical pillar, and the spiritual pillar. The intellectual pillar, obviously that includes our mind, right? And this is the thing. Our mind is the loudest. That's the loudest pillar. It's the most active pillar. And so often we think that we're feeling, but what we're actually feeling is the suffering our mind is creating. We have so many stories, so many beliefs, so many thoughts, and it's all so very subconscious until we start to do the work of bringing it to the surface and really building that presence, right? And it creates so much suffering in our body, and we actually don't need to feel that. But that's what we're feeling, and that's what we're thinking. That That's what makes us think, oh yeah, I'm, I feel, I'm connected to my body. When I started this work, I was blown away and I was like, holy shit, I am so disconnected. I'm just identifying with everything my mind tells me. And here's the thing, our mind is rooted in fear and scarcity, right? It has this lack mentality. We have this primal part of our brain that is constantly scanning the horizon for threats. And, you know, even like looking at a person's facial expression and if their facial expression looks like they're judging us or like they're making a face at us, gets activated and we think that you know they they don't accept us and that part of our brain served a purpose because back in the day if we weren't accepted by the tribe we literally died right so it it did keep us safe but now we're working with this ancient system that doesn't allow us to thrive if we allow our, ourselves to identify with it right so understanding that has been so, so helpful in the process of like checking into these three pillars because they're always communicating to us. It's just like I said, that intellectual pillar is the loudest. And when we identify with it, it just creates so much suffering that we don't need, right? We don't need to suffer. Pain is inevitable. Suffering's optional. So the next pillar, the physical pillar, that's everything we feel in our body. So that can include the aches and pains, um, you know, sore muscles after a workout, that kind of thing. But that also includes the emotions and the sensations, the feelings. Um, so for example, emotions, sad, joyous, happy, angry, frustrated, um, anxiety, depression, like all that kind of stuff. The sensations are what those emotions feel like in the body. So you might feel constriction, you might feel tightness, heaviness, you might feel fluttering, you might feel knots, you might feel expansiveness, lightness, right? So that's the, that is the physical pillar and that is what is present in our body that we get to learn how to feel without identifying in our mind. So it can go both ways. Our mind can create sensations 
or our mind can attach to the sensations that are just present in our body that we just need to feel and go into story and then start to like intensify the sensations and then more story and then that just creates suffering right but if we can just learn to observe 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 I can't talk tonight if we can just learn to observe the stories and know that we don't need to believe them and that we can create new stories and new beliefs and that's like another layer and another thing I work um, on with my clients then we can just feel what's present in our body and I'm gonna get into like how to do that because initially when we start to work on presence and then we're like okay I feel this but now like what the frick do I do with it that's another layer and I'm gonna talk about that in another video in one of these steps um, so the last pillar is the spiritual pillar, right? And I know when I went through, you know, when I was in the depths of that struggle, I had no connection to spirit. I didn't believe in, in religion anymore. I didn't believe in God. It just didn't, it wasn't alignment. It didn't feel good to me, but I didn't know there was any, anything else to believe in, you know, until I hit my rock bottom and I found faith and I found spirituality and I continue you know, my beliefs around it and continues to evolve and my connection continues to build with that part. Um, so our spiritual pillar includes that connection to the universe, divine, God, whatever you want to call it, but also our intuition, right? And that's another thing that we get to build. And it's quiet compared to <laughs> the mind, right? It's quiet compared to the intellectual pillar. So we really have to or we get to practice really being in our body and coming back to our body and it's this process and there's layers through it um, but I just want to give you these three pillars um, so that we can access our intuition and it's like a muscle that we get to build right it's not something that we connect to once and then we're like okay I got this I'm connected to my intuition no we actually get to practice and same with this whole topic of presence we have to practice being present and it's constantly being intentional um, about being present because we can revert back so fast to that you know subconscious state especially when we're in the process of shifting our core beliefs which do take longer right we can't shift them just like that it's 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 a whole process and like I said that's a whole other video but this is why like this is important to help you stop binge eating when we have the awareness of what's going on in our internal environment right and we can separate ourselves from the stories and the thoughts and we even know what's going on there because usually until we even start to pay attention and bring that to the surface it's very subconscious and we don't even know that it's driving our behaviors um, so when we start to bring that to the surface then we have this like perspective of what's actually going on internally and we don't need to use food to distract ourselves anymore right because we can choose to check in with each pillar to see what's in alignment for us and spiritual pillars always going to be what's in alignment for us right with the body with the physical pillar it's just emotions are energy they are energy in motion and it's just we get to relearn how to feel them and I'm going to talk about this in another step in one of my other videos um, coming up on Monday so I'll be doing these videos Monday at 8 p.m. Um, about how we can get to the process of actually feeling them because often there's a lot of fear there's a lot of protectors that are involved that like shut that part of us down so that we sabotage ourselves right and that's part of how food has served you or anyone that's struggling with binge eating it's it's it serves you to keep you safe from feeling what is happening internally right we learn from a very young age that pain is a bad thing that we need to like get rid of it as quick as we can whether it's physical pain or emotional pain right so it's this beautiful process and it's just so fun to like dig into all of this stuff with my clients so I am excited for next Monday. Please, please, if you have any questions or if you learned anything with this video, please share. I would love to hear from you. And we will see you next Monday at uh, 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time for the second step um, of what really helped me stop binge eating. <laughs>